And now, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Reyes, guitarist and producer, is coming up. Grammy Award winning producer, Latin Grammy Award nominated artist Joe Reyes, recorded sessions for artists ranging from eh, Freddie Fender, Sarah Hickman. His solo work has led him to perform in the Netherlands. And Den why is the Netherlands first on this list? The Netherlands, uh, I don't know, Denmark, Belgium, Germany, Italy, performs with regional acts like Buttercup, Mitch Webb, and the Swindles, Salim Narala, Nara Narala and Billy Harvey. He's also produced artists for local artists including Marcus Rubio, cartographers, Wolverton, Rachel Laban, Nicolette Good, and more. Please give it up for Joe Ray! Hi, Andy. How are you? Good, good. Thanks, everyone. Ah, this is so nerve-wracking without a guitar. This is not so much fun. But thank Nicolette actually invited me to do this, so I'm glad I did it. Um, I can't really um, thank my wife, Michelle Mondo, enough for helping with everything, basically. So, um, But anyways, um, let's just begin. Ready? Okay. I'm often asked, especially when I'm traveling, how I make a living playing music. And I usually mention things like developing a good ear or practicing a lot. But that's really only part, and I owe most of my success to my family. Um, who taught me the value of hard work and education. These slides tonight illustrate a work ethic that's been handed down through generations, highlighting different periods of my family's history, leading up to where I am today in this beautiful theater. It's crazy. Uh, it all starts about 100 years ago in this mountainous mining village in central Mexico. At the start of the 1900s, Real de Catorce was booming. It's one of the more well-known mining towns in the area. The silver there had already attracted a bunch of big names and the promise of work lured in my, my, uh, my, my great-grandfather's family. So they lived in Matawala. You can see it's pretty pretty. But that's not really their view. Their view was more like the next slide, which I assume is going to be there. Mining silver was hard work, and even getting to Catorce is difficult. Just one tunnel, a mile and a half long, that can barely fit one car. But overall, everything's pretty good. And it might have stayed that way if not for the Mexican Revolution. So, uh, it sent my family fleeing north to the US. My great-grandfather knew someone who knew someone who was able to get them across the border, along with 200,000 other refugees. 800 miles north in a small mining town, my great-grandfather settled his family. Mining coal, this time, would become their livelihood again. My dad loved this painting by Jesse Trevino. It actually, there's a print of it over the cash register at Blanco Cafe. And so it reminded him of his childhood, you know, working with my grandfather in the fields. Uh, the family had turned to sharecropping once the mines had closed. And there he learns this, you know, valuable lesson about hard work uh, alongside the adults when he wasn't in school. This is his typewriter. <clears throat> my school, school was important to my grandfather. Typing was the kind of skill that could get my dad you know, out of the fields. It also kept him off the front lines in Europe in World War II. Uh, he bought this typewriter back when he got back from the war and when he enrolled at Baylor University. And it was mine for a little bit. This is a clip of, uh, he, was, he played third base for the Baylor Bears. So there he is, Rudy Reyes, unheralded third base sacker, I think is what it says. He, he batted a 400, that's insane. Like, I don't know, that must, might, maybe, maybe that's how I can go so fast, I have no idea. So, after graduating, he gets a job with the Texas Employment Commission. This building is right down the street, it's on Dwyer. And so, uh, with the GI Bill loan, he bought the land that my family had been farming, and my grandfather, now a naturalized citizen, kept working that land. But my dad was ready to start his own family. There they are. I'm in there somewhere. <clears throat> yeah. He started at the Texas Employment Commission in Waco, but he soon got promoted here, and that's where my brother and I were born. Um, I was born right down the street at Santa Rosa. My Aunt Olga said my mother could hear something once on the radio and then immediate play, immediately play it on their piano. And when I was little, I could, you know, she would play a simple melody and I could kind of play it back. But the piano was kind of like a machine. You press a button. And I really wanted to touch the strings of something, so I really needed another instrument, not, not this thing. There, <laughs> this is my brother and I. 
that's the stereo my folks had, and that's the stereo, the little record player that I got. And so I was listening to their records a bit, and even on trips to our farm, I could hear my grandfather and you know the workers play these rancheras or corridos. But that stuff sounds really folkloric. I really hadn't found the thing that would turn me on. Nothing like these guys. <laughs> Los Beatles? Oh my God. <laughs> this was life changing. This is, this is basically the moment I say to myself like, okay, well, I'm gonna do that. And, but, but I need a guitar, I need something to do. So during visits, you know, my aunt would come and uh, buy us toys. And one day I see this, this thing in the display, it's the actual soundtrack to the movie Help. And so I get it and that's the end, really. It's beautiful. So I get my first guitar. Oh, we were in El Paso visiting my aunt. There's me with my first decent electric guitar and a top hat years before Slash. <laughs> so I'm trying to memorize, you know, I'm just working off the of records and doing my best. And it's, you know, slow going at first, but I'm just sort of determined I have to do this. And so my dad finally comes to see me play in this band. This band is called Fine Line. Uh, this was at Los Padrinos. I don't know if anybody remembers Los Padrinos. The guy to my right, Eric Rebus, actually plays with Branford Marsalis still. So we were on to something. You know, like all of us were kind of moving forward and we wanted it, you know, this momentum to keep up. It was, it was a lot to keep ahead of. But uh, in the late 80s, I meet the Morales brothers and they, you know, just kind of train me to make records. It's great. We can do a bunch of different styles. And I start to acquire enough equipment so that I can start to record at my own apartment. And amazingly enough, a bunch of award-winning recordings were done basically in my living room. So. <laughs> with the album World Jazz by Lada and Reyes, a record I co-produced with Freddie Fender. Uh, I won a Grammy Award and I was nominated for a Latin Grammy. Uh, on what I call the decade plan, I managed, managed to get my bachelor's in English from UTSA. I would see Lloyd there on occasion. <laughs> my dad was very proud of all those things, but mostly the diploma, yeah. <laughs> when he was sick with dementia right before he died, I would go visit him, and that's when the music that I used to listen to, you know, when, when I was at the farm would help, because I could actually play something and he could remember it. He could remember who he was, and it was great, so. <laughs> I'll never get to work in a mine. I'll never have to pick cotton. I have two fat cats, and I play music for a living. In just 100 years, that happened to my family. That's incredible. Yeah. When people ask me about how I became a musician, it really just stretches the surface, my answer. But anyways, now you know. So, thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. A couple, of, a couple of personal embarrassing questions. Oh, God. Okay, we go. uh, actually, somebody literally came up from backstage and said, ask him about Freddie Fender. He just oh. through the night, go yes. Freddie yes. Fender. Yeah, Freddie Fender and I, uh, with the Morales Brothers, we produced a record together called La Musica de Baldemar Huerta. It was literally like a mariachi album. We had a songwriting meeting with him, and he had his, you know, Wasted Days and Wasted Nights type tunes, but he played this bolero, and I just blurted out, like, we should do a whole album of that. And that's the record. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and it won how, a Grammy. How much do you produce your uh, for other people, and how much do you get to play your own stuff these days? It's, it's about 50-50. I, I like wearing all the different hats, you know, of, of production. Yeah, top hats. Really. Uh -huh. One says producer, one says you know session guitar player. But but I love playing in bands. You know, it's, it's have fun. you been back to Real de Couture? I've been there. No, it's you awesome. know, I heard it's beautiful. I also heard it's like a huge like kind of vision quest kind of area now with peyote and stuff. So <laughs> maybe now's the time. Is that no. what you were doing? Ah, no. I see. I That's see. where they shot the Mexican, the movie. That's with, uh, yeah, yeah. I forgot name? to mention Brad that Dan. the Mexican. Oh, okay, not right. where they shot the Mexican, where they shot the movie. The film. <laughs> yes. The Mexican. Yeah. A lot of Mexicans were shot during the Revolution. The Laredo. That's, right. That's, That's a different subject. Uh, oh, come on. And now, how about uh, where can they see you say in the next month? I know June was a busy month for you. June, July, August were very busy, but on September 18th, I will be here with Buttercup, and we're going to play with Allison Alonzo. It's going to be awesome. Cool. I actually played this theater once before. And did you get the inspiration for your hair from Freddie Fender or yes. Barbara Barr? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Freddie on that one. All right. Well, thank you very much. Sure, sure. Thanks. Joe Reyes. Enjoy a beer break with Joe Reyes. Yes. Come back. 10, 15 minutes. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks,
Yeah, woo!